Hallelujah and blessings in Jesus, friends. Welcome back to Hayek Kadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life, and Jesus is truly King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And together with grateful hearts, God's people say, Hallelujah. Well, friends, we are continuing our study. We are actually finalizing our study on the book of First Enoch today. Now, we're going to begin in chapter 105, and we're going to carry through to chapter 108, which is the final chapter in this mysterious, great, and wonderful, and enlightening book. Now, I have placed a link in the description box below if you'd like to follow along with us. And I have to say that the final chapter, 108, is such an appealing, such a heartwarming, filled with such promises to look forward to that my heart is truly about to burst. And I can only say, come Lord Jesus, I so long to be home. I so long to be rid of this world of pain and suffering and misery and sin plagued. Come, come Lord Jesus. Well, let's just jump right in. Chapter 105 of the book of First Enoch. In those days, the Lord bade them to summon and testify to the children of earth concerning their wisdom. Show it unto them, for ye are their guides and a recompense over the whole earth. Recompense simply means judgment. It can also mean payment, but in this context, it's applying to judgment. And notice verse two of this chapter, for I and my son will be united with them forever in the paths of uprightness in their lives, and you shall have peace. Rejoice, you children of uprightness. Amen. And that's the end of chapter 105. It ends by saying, rejoice, you children of uprightness. Why? Because eye has not seen, ear has not heard the things that God has prepared for those who love him, who obey him, who follow his commandments, who surrender to his will, and who heed the voice of his spirit. Rejoice, you children of uprightness, for I and my son will be united with them forever in the paths of uprightness in their lives. This is a clear indication written 700 years before the flood by this man Enoch that God says, I and my son will be united with them. What a promise, friends. What joy to look forward to such a day as this. Chapter 106. And after some days, my son Methuselah took a wife for his son Lamech. And she became pregnant by him and bore a son. Now we know that Lamech's son was Noah. And that's who Enoch is speaking of here. In verse 2, his body was white as snow and red as the blooming of a rose. And the hair of his head and his long locks were white as wool and his eyes beautiful. And when he opened his eyes, he lighted up the whole house like the sun and the whole house was very bright. Now you're going to see in a few moments that this is not language used as imagery. This is actually literal. There was something very special about this child Noah, in that his body was as white as snow, red as the blooming of a rose, his hair had long locks, white as wool, and when his eyes opened, they lighted up the whole house like the sun, and the whole house became very bright. Verse 3, And thereupon he arose in the hands of the midwife, opened his mouth, and conversed with the Lord of righteousness. And his father Lamech was afraid of him, and fled, and came to his father Methuselah. So Lamech is afraid of this child Noah because of the appearance that he has, unlike any other human. And he said unto him, I have begotten a strange son, diverse from and unlike man, and resembling the sons of the God of heaven. This would be the angels. And his nature is different, and he is not like us. And his eyes are as the rays of the sun, and his countenance is glorious. 
And it seems to me that he is not sprung from me, but from the angels. And I fear that in his days a wonder may be wrought on the earth. And now, my father, I am here to petition thee and implore thee that thou mayest go to Enoch, who, remember, was recognized as a great prophet, a spokesman for the Most High. He says, go to Enoch, our father, and learn from him the truth, for his dwelling place is amongst the angels. And when Methuselah heard the words of his son, he came to me to the ends of the earth, for he had heard that I, Enoch, was there. And he cried aloud, and I heard his voice, and I came to him. And I said unto him, Behold, here am I, my son, wherefore hast thou come to me? And he answered and said, Because of a great cause of anxiety have I come to thee, and because of a disturbing vision have I approached. And now, my father, hear me. Unto Lamech, my son, there hath been born a son, the like of whom there is none, and his nature is not like man's nature. And the color of his body is whiter than snow, and redder than the blossom of a rose. And the hair of his head is whiter than white wool, and his eyes are like the rays of the sun. And he opened his eyes, and thereupon lighted up the whole house. And he arose in the hands of the midwife, and opened his mouth, and blessed the Lord of heaven. And his father Lamech became afraid, and fled to me, and did not believe that he was sprung from him that he was his offspring, but that he was in the likeness of the angels of heaven. And behold, I have come to thee, that thou mayest make known to me the truth. And I, Enoch, answered and said unto him, The Lord will do a new thing on the earth, and this I have already seen in a vision, and make known to thee that in the generation of my father Jared, some of the angels of heaven transgressed the word of the Lord. This would be the 200 fallen angels that was mentioned back in chapter 6, verse 6. And behold, they commit sin and transgress the law and have united themselves with women and commit sin with them and have married some of them and have begot children by them. Yea, there shall come a great destruction over the whole earth and there shall be a deluge and a great destruction for one year. Now, this is talking about the flood, and in Genesis chapter 7, we can mathematically calculate that the flood, from the moment that God shut the door till the moment he told them to leave the ark, was exactly one year and ten days. And here Enoch is writing, 700 years before the flood, that the deluge, the flood of great destruction, will be or last for one year. What preciseness in the recording in this book, First Enoch. Verse 16 continues, And this son, speaking of Noah, who has been born unto you shall be left on the earth, and his three children, they shall be saved with him. When all mankind that are on the earth shall die, he and his sons shall be saved. Again, the mention of three sons. What exact preciseness Enoch is recording for us. In verse 17, he says, they, and the they he's speaking of is in chapter 14, when he's talking about the fallen angels of heaven who transgress the word of the Lord. He says, they shall produce on the earth giants, not according to the spirit, but according to the flesh. And there shall be a great punishment on the earth, and the earth shall be cleansed from all impurity. And now make known to thy son Lamech that he who has been born is in truth his son. So he's saying, go back and tell Lamech not to be in anxiety over whether his son is angelic or divine. It's truly his son. And call his name Noah. So Enoch, most likely hearing from God, names the son of Lamech Noah. Now, it's interesting that the name Noah actually means rest or comfort, and that's exactly what took place on the ark. Noah rested for a year while the rest of the world was destroyed. It continues by saying, he shall be left to you, and he and his sons shall be saved from the destruction, which shall come upon the earth on account of all the sin and all the unrighteousness 
which shall be consummated on the earth in his days. And after that, there shall be still more unrighteousness than that which was first consummated on the earth. For I know the mysteries of the holy ones, for he the Lord has showed me and informed me, and I have read them in the heavenly tablets. So Enoch is prophesying that there will be more evil on the earth after the flood than there was before the flood. And this is probably talking based upon the amount of people on the earth. If you had, let's say, a million people on earth before the flood, and you have seven billion after the flood, obviously the number of sins is greater because the people who can commit those sins is greater. Chapter 107. And I saw written on these tablets that generation upon generation shall transgress until a generation of righteousness arises and transgression is destroyed and sin passes away from the earth and all manner of good comes upon it. This would seem to be talking about the 1,000 year millennial reign of Jesus Christ on earth. He says in verse two, and now my son, go and make known to thy son Lamech that this son, which has been born, who is Noah, is in truth his son, and that this is no lie. And when Methuselah had heard the words of his father Enoch, for he had shown to him everything in secret, he returned and showed them to him and called the name of that son Noah, for he will comfort the earth after all the destruction. And remember, Noah's name means rest or comfort. He will comfort the earth after all the destruction. Chapter 108. And I say this with a little bit of sadness in my heart because I have learned so much through studying and reviewing this book. And this is the last chapter. But what a way to end this book. And you will see as we progress through this chapter that as we close the final page, we are left with joy and satisfaction in knowing that God has a plan, that God has a purpose, and that God has promised if we live faithfully and righteously, joy unspeakable and full of glory awaits us on the other side. Let's begin the final chapter. Another book which Enoch wrote for his son Methuselah and for those who will come after him and keep the law in the last days. You see, we were told all the way back in chapter one, this book was written for those that would live in the last days. But Enoch adds not only those who will live in those days, but those who will keep the law of the Almighty in those days. Verse two, ye who have done good shall wait for those days till an end is made of those who work evil and an end of the might of the transgressors. And wait ye indeed till sin has passed away, for their name shall be blotted out of the book of life and out of the holy books. And their seed shall be destroyed forever, and their spirits shall be slain. And they shall cry and make lamentation in a place that is a chaotic wilderness. And in the fire shall they burn, for there is no earth there. And I saw there something like an invisible cloud, for by reason of its depth, I could not look over, and I saw a flame of fire blazing brightly, and things like shining mountains circling and sweeping to and fro. And I asked one of the holy angels who was with me and said unto him, What is this shining thing? For it is not a heaven, but only the flame of a blazing fire, and the voice of weeping and crying and lamentation and strong pain. And he said unto me, This place which thou seest, here are cast the spirits of sinners and blasphemers and of those who work wickedness and of those who pervert everything that the Lord has spoken through the mouth of the prophets, even the things that shall be. For some of them are written and inscribed above in the heaven in order that the angels may read them and know that which shall befall the sinners, and the spirits of the humble, and those who have afflicted their bodies, and been recompensed by God, and of those who have been put to shame by wicked men, who love God. This would be speaking of the spirits of the humble who were just mentioned in the previous verse. 
who love God and did not love gold nor silver nor any of the good things which are in the world, but gave over their bodies to torture. Now, friends, the purpose of this ministry, Haya Kadosh Ministries, is to learn what it means to live holy lives. And at its crux is to separate ourselves from this world, the pleasures of this world. You see, it is the sinner, the people of this world, who are enjoying all the fulfilling things in this life. They're chasing after all of its pleasures. And yet in this verse, it tells us the humble are those who love God, neither do they love gold nor silver, nor any of the good things which are in the world that the world offers, but they have given over their bodies to torture or to sacrifice. They sacrifice many of the things that they can enjoy in this life because they know that they do not belong to this world. And so they set aside this world's passions and desires and lusts for the promise that awaits them in the world to come. And the main reason for that is, is they don't want to use their income, their financial blessings that the Almighty has bestowed upon them. They don't want to use or spend it upon themselves. They live very meager lives and any extra surplus that they have, they bestow upon others. They love others as they love themselves. Verse 9, who since they came into being did not long after earthly food, but they regarded everything as a passing breath, and they lived accordingly. And the Lord tried them much, and their spirits were found pure so that they should bless his name. In other words, the Almighty places many times opportunities where we can enjoy the pleasures and luxuries of this life, but those are temptations. They are tests. The Lord's trying us to see if we're going to indulge ourselves or if we're truly going to love our neighbor as ourself. Now, I have to tell you, friends, out of the thousands of chapters that we have read in the review of this book, these have to be the two most powerful that we've read. So I want to reread them one more time, and I want you to allow them to really sink deep into your soul. The humble love God, and they do not love gold nor silver, nor any of the good things which are in this world, but they give their bodies over to sacrifice, who since they came into being, long not after earthly food, but they regarded everything as a passing breath, and they lived accordingly. And the Lord tried them much, and their spirits were found pure so that they should bless his name. And all the blessings destined for them, I have recounted in the books. And he has assigned them their reward, their recompense, because they have been found to be such as loved heaven more than their life in this world. And though they were trodden underfoot of wicked men and experienced abuse and reviling from them and were put to shame, yet they blessed me. And now I will summon the spirits of the good who belong to the generation of light, and I will transform those who were born in darkness, who in the flesh were not recompensed with such honor as their faithfulness deserved. In other words, God says, I look upon the righteous of the earth and I long to bless them like they deserve to be blessed. But their blessing is not in this life, it's in the life to come. Verse 12, I will bring forth in shining light those who have loved my holy name. And I will seat each on the throne of his honor. And they shall be resplendent for times without number. I wish I could give you the visual image of what I see when I hear the word resplendent. It would almost be as if a bright light was shining on a diamond and it was reflecting that light to a point where you couldn't even look upon it or into it. And Yahweh, the Most High, the Almighty says here, we will be resplendent for times without number, for righteousness is the judgment of God. For to the faithful, 
he will give faithfulness in the habitation of upright paths. And they shall see those who were born in darkness, led into darkness, while the righteous shall be resplendent. And our final verse in this book, friends, the sinners shall cry aloud and they shall see the righteous resplendent and they indeed will go where days and seasons are prescribed for them. Well, friends, I pray that this study has done for you what it has done for me. I pray that this book has been an eye-opening, enlightening experience for you. And I pray that your journey will be blessed by Jesus through his spirit according to the Father, in all things that you do in his name. I love you, friends. Now, as Yahweh wills, and until next time, I'll see you on the next video.